So a couple of weeks ago, I did the PCX68000 tutorial, and a couple of months prior to that, I did the PC98 tutorial. And there's something about these Japanese computers that I really love. They're a little bit more complicated than usual, uh, but for the most part, they're an oddity that we in the United States never really got to play around with. So today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials, we're taking a step back from the PC-98 to the PC-8801, the little brother to the PC-9801. So I'll show you how to get the ROMs imported and how you get it up and running in LaunchBox. So first, let's head on over to the link in the description below to the Takagawa Corporate Forums. Scroll down to the Omega and Mediafire links, click on one of them, and download the emulator package to a folder of your choosing. You're going to download the nkemulite.7zip, and inside are a bunch of folders for a bunch of different uh, systems. If you've followed the Sharp X68000 and 9801 tutorials previously, then you should actually still may have this package. So you're going to take the NEC PC8801 emulators package and you're going to take all these files and you're going to drag them out into a folder of your choice. Once you've got them extracted, for the most part, we're good to go from here. So XM8, Quasi88, X88X, X88000, M88, and Common Source Code Project are the emulators of choice. And the one that we're going to be using is the Common Source Code Project. The others you can use if you would like to. Uh, some do better jobs than others. Some emulate CDs better. Some emulate tapes better this or, or that. However, let's go into the common source code project folder. And if you are on a 64-bit version of Windows, then you're good to go from here. Otherwise, if you are on a 32-bit version, open up the 32-bit folder and move this exe back one folder into this location and overwrite it with the 32-bit version. If you are on 64-bit though, we are good to go. Over in LaunchBox, let's go ahead and import our games. So we're going to go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. We're going to click Next, Add Files, and I've got my games in a couple of locations. So what I'm going to do here is I've got a folder of a CD and a couple of translated games, and these are D88 file extension to games. The CD has a bunch of bin files, but has a cue sheet. So in the search bar in the top right, I'm going to type an asterisk dot D88, and then I'm going to click on one of the games, Control A to highlight them all, and then click Open. We're going to click Add Files again. This time I'm going to replace D88 with .cue, and then I'm going to double click on my cue sheet. I'm going to click Add Files again because I want to navigate to a different location uh, where I've got my games. So I found a package of PC8801 games online. It was called the Neo Kobe pack. Obviously there's a little bit of parody there. The package that I had you guys download is only of emulators. That section of that package only deals with emulators, but online there is a package of games floating around that has a bunch of supplemental texts, uh, readmes, uh, documents, PDFs, images. That's actually a really, really, really nice complete package. So in this window, I'm going to go to the top right again. We're going to search D88. I'm going to click on a game, control A to highlight them all. And this will be a bulk of our disk images. After that long list is parsed, we're going to click on add files again. We're going to search for Q as well. There's only going to be one more of those. Then we're going to click add files again. Then we're going to search for CMT and these are cassette images. So we're going to click on one of them, control A, then open. Add files one more time. And there's another file in here that is T88. And there's a couple of these as well. And these are also tapes. So you're going to click on one of them, control A to highlight them all, and then open. Once you've got all of the file extensions added, let's go ahead and click next. Platform for imported ROMs is going to be the NEC PC8801. If you want to name it something custom like uh, the PC8801, ignore the NEC. Make sure that you set up the scrape as for NEC PC8801. If you don't, if you don't care what it's called, just leave it at default and then click next. Where it says choose an emulator, it's most likely going to be empty. So go ahead and click add. You're gonna set the emulator name. And for me, I didn't exactly know what to call it. So I called it the common source code project. And then in parentheses, I put the name of the EXE, which is PC8801MA. 
then you're going to click browse and you're going to navigate to where you have downloaded uh, the, the emulator pack, specifically the common source code project. And you're going to double click on that exe. And then we're going to go to the associated platforms tab. You're going to double click an empty space and you're going to type the name of the platform that you've just added. So a couple of screens back, we added the NEC PC 8801. If you named it something different, whatever you put in that top box, go ahead and put here in the associated platforms tab and then go ahead and check the default emulator box remember if you want to change the emulator it has nothing to do with the default emulator box you have to click on one of your games control a to highlight them all right click one of them edit one of the games and which will bring up the bulk edit wizard that's how you change the emulator and since there are a couple of different emulator versions uh, and you want to play around with those that's how you change the emulator. It has nothing to do with the default emulator box. It's mostly to do for when you're first importing your games. Once you've got that set, let's go ahead and press OK. And we're going to click Next. Use the files in their current location. We're going to keep the checkbox for search for game information from the Launchbox Games database. And we're going to click Next. We're going to keep all of these image boxes checked as well. The Next. Then it's going to log you into your Emu Movies account. And if you haven't logged into your Emu Movies account from within Launchbox, it's going to prompt you to. If you don't have an account, go ahead and go over to the website, create one, and then log in. And then these uh, checkboxes are going to pop up as well. We're going to keep these checked also and then click next. On this screen, more so than usual, I just keep these at default, uh, especially combine ROMs with matching titles into a single game. That's probably one of the most useful features. And since this is an old computer, there are many parts to a single game. So that's almost integral to keep your file list down. As well, because of the package we got, we have all those PDFs. Look for PDF files is also more than usual, uh, very handy this time around as well. I'm gonna go ahead and click next. It's gonna parse the list of ROM files that we are importing into LaunchBox. It's going to display them all for you. And if you would like to rename something, go ahead and double click it. If you would like to just remove something, click on the game and press delete and it will go ahead and remove it for you. Once you're ready to import, go ahead and click finish. And as you can see, I didn't quite find many images. In fact, I don't think I found any, which kind of sucks. Uh, the PC-8801 is a little bit lacking in that respect. But when the games are done and imported, go ahead and right click a game and open common source code project. We're gonna click on control on the top menu. Uh, I've kept the mode at default, but you can change the mode if you would like. Where it says CPU, I've changed it from four megahertz to eight megahertz, but you can change this also as well. And some games may load with some of these options better than other options. So if a game's pl not playing around quite, ni quite nice with you, uh, change one of the settings, that may help as well. Where it says CPU times one, uh, I believe that this is a speed up option. Uh, so if a game is just running too stupidly slow, and you're thinking to yourself, this game would be great double, like double sped up. You can change it to CPU times two and it will be double speed all the way up to CPU times 16. Obviously, it's not a great way to play every game in, but the option does exist. And then you can change it from joystick to bus mouse here. Uh, bus mouse would just be using your mouse for games that can use a mouse. Otherwise, you can also set up a joystick as well. And down here is a save state and load state function also. Over in the screen option, there's at the top here uh, options to record from the emulator, which is pretty damn awesome. That's not really common in a lot of emulators anymore, so that's pretty nice. When I first opened up uh, this emulator, you saw how it was smaller and then doubled real fast. And that's because I have window times two on. Window times one's a little too small for me, but I don't want it full screen. So times two is a, is a nice middle ground. I wish it was 2.5 or maybe even three, but two works pretty well for me. If you are someone who wants it to be in full screen, you can also set your full screen resolution right below that. And then down here, it was defaulted to stretch aspect. So it'll stretch the screen, but keep the aspect ratio. If you are somebody who likes to fill their screen instead, uh, you can do that. But remember, this this is content that was made in 4x3 or in not necessarily perfect 16x9 resolutions. So stretching it may make it look awkward or weird. Uh, personally, I've just selected dot by dot, and that's what I like myself. It's using direct 3D9 by default. You can also check the wait for vSync option if you would like, if uh, it's tearing, if you're getting screen tearing, you can go ahead and check that on. Uh, if you like CRT filters or scan lines, those also exist down here as well. 
And if a game is at a weird angle or orientation that you don't like, or your screen is set up differently, uh, there are also rotation options in here as well. Under the sound options, uh, you can come down here and change the, the, the hertz that something is set at, but I've left this all at default. Uh, I, I believe that this is probably like the delay, 100 milliseconds at 55,000 kilohertz. And then down here, I assume that this is just the, uh, the audio driver that it's using, OPNA. I'm not sure what that is. If you are having audio issues, you can try changing, changing it to OPN or OPN plus OPNA. Over in the input tab, let's go down to joystick number one. And I have my PS4 controller connected with input mapper. The up, down, left, right was set properly, but button one and button two wasn't. So go ahead and click on the first button, press the button on your controller to match what you would like it to be, and then click on button two and press the other button that you would like that to be as well, and then press OK. With some of those settings set up, let's go ahead and close this out. Let's go ahead and right click Genesis beyond the revelation and launch that. Okay, there we go. So the PC-88 is a little weird, at least with this game, and I'm going to assume some of the other games, uh, it likes the numpad. So do keep that in mind. Um, if you are trying to map keyboard functions to a controller, or um, if you're just a little confused why something's not working, this game, instead of using arrow keys, is using the numpad. So 8426 instead of your arrow keys, it doesn't, it doesn't make much sense, but I mean, what are we gonna do, right? There you go. That is well, at least this one game up and running. It's a little bit of an interesting game too. Uh, so do keep that in mind. The controls are going to be a little bit more wonky than usual. But there you go, everyone. That is how you get the PC-88 up and running in LaunchBox. If this tutorial helped you out at all, then please give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more in the future. If you have any questions about this tutorial, leave them in the comment section below or head on over to our forums and make a thread if you would like asking your question. If you are one of our Patreon producers, then your name is now on screen. And thank you all very much. Your support directly helps the LaunchBox team and its continued growth. If you'd like to have your name in the credits inside of any of the videos that we do or inside of the LaunchBox application, then head on over to the Patreon link in the description below. If you do choose to support us at the producer level, then you do get the producer level credits and then every other tier previously. If you'd like to set a custom amount, you can also do that as well. My name is Brand. The link to my channel is below. I've been telling you guys that I've been working on revamping my channel, and I'm slowly starting to get there. A Fallout 4 Let's Play has started to post. A fully modded, tricked out game. It's like 340 mods. I don't know how it's running, but it is. So if you'd like to check that out, if that sounds like a cup of tea, the link to my channel is also below. Remember, Freaks and Geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you all next time. Have a good day.